new Dimension 20, new Wild Shape rules, and a Gen Con controversy. I know this looks bad. Welcome to Fantasy News Friday, our weekend news rundown. Today we're talking about the new season of Dimension 20, some more D&D news updates, and a brewing Gen Con controversy. Remember, if you like these kinds of news stories, remember to like and subscribe so we can keep making them. Now, on to the news. Let's do this! The first episode of Dimension 20's newest season, Never Stop Blowing Up, has launched over on Dropout. In addition to containing the usual hilarity and drama that we've come to expect from Dimension 20, it also features a new game system. Well, actually, a modified version of Kids on Bikes slash Kids on Brooms called Never Stop Blowing Up. The Never Stop Blowing Up game system utilizes the blowing up mechanic from Kids on Bikes, uh, which basically means that you start off with a low dice like a D4, and if you roll the maximum result, your dice uh, upgrades. Sure which is if you hit the, the max number on the dice, you blow up and you move to the next level of dice. So, uh, and when you fail, you get little tokens and then you can add those tokens up. And that's what we have here is these little red pieces are our failure tokens. And so when you fail a row, you take those and then you can use them the same you would for kids on bikes, kids on brooms, which is you can add to dice rolls to make them blow up or meet a requirement from the GM. Uh, but also what you can do in this game is you can save your tokens and at the end of the game you can buy abilities and you can buy abilities for yourself and you can also uh, you can put the tokens together and you can buy abilities as a group. That's a pretty cool mechanic and we can't wait to see how it all plays out. Remember, go and subscribe to Dropout and watch the newest episode of Dimension 20. Time for daddy to have fun! <laughs> Conan the Barbarian is getting a brand new tabletop RPG. Monolith Edition Board Games is making a new Conan the Hyborian Age RPG with a quick start guide available to download now. The game uses a brand new type of game system with four stats, each of which has a score of 1 to 8, and also a stat die ranging from a d6 to a d10. How the game works is that players add their stat score to the result of the corresponding stat die roll to determine whether that check succeeds or fails. They also roll a flex die with every check, and if that flex die uh, shows its maximum result, they score a flex and can choose to either automatically succeed, gain a stamina point that they can spend on various abilities, or deal massive damage if the check was made as a combat roll. Now, no release date has been announced for this new RPG, but we're guessing that if a quick start guide is ready, we should hear more news soon. To crush your enemies, see them driven before you. This week's 2024 D&D Player's Handbook previews included uh, class previews for the Rogue, the Warlock, the Druid, the Wizard, and the Ranger. Now, we have coverage on all of those over on our parent site, Comic Book, uh, but we wanted to call attention to the Wild Shape, which got a major overhaul as part of the Druid's new uh, class features. The ability now uses a bonus action to activate instead of a full action. Players gain a temp pool of HP when they wild shape instead of gaining the hit points of the creature they transform into. And there are limitations to how many beast forms a player knows at one time. Now, we'll probably have some deeper breakdowns next week on some of these big changes, including uh, talking about the Ranger, which hadn't been published when we recorded this video. What say you? We got some new looks at Lord of the Rings Rings of Power this week, with Amazon revealing that the Barrow Whites would be appearing in live action for the very first time. Now, the Barrow Whites, of course, are basically like Dragor, who appeared in the Lord of the Rings novels, uh, you know, in the Barrows by the Shire, uh, but they have not made any kind of live action appearance whatsoever. Now, of course, the Barrow Whites were also under the sway or control of the Witch King of Agmar, uh, who many speculate is Theo, that kid that lived in what's now Mordor. So the new season kicks off in just about two months and color us intrigued. My interest is piqued. And finally, a number of tabletop RPG personalities are pulling out of Gen Con after the Crit Awards, which is a newish awards program focused mainly on actual play, shows, and series, announced that they were, quote, unable to return to Gen Con due to, quote, safety concerns. The Crit Awards had previously made a statement condemning the ongoing military action in Palestine that has resulted in over 40,000 civilian deaths. 
and it appears that the safety concerns were tied to that statement. Now, neither Gen Con nor the Crit Awards have explicitly said that Gen Con forced the Crit Awards to withdraw from the convention, but several people connected to the Crit Awards has said that's the case over on Twitter. Now, we're still looking into the story and trying to get to the bottom of it, and we'll provide an update in a future video if we learn anything. Well, that's all the news that we have for you today. Let us know what your favorite story was in the comment section, and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons.